الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسل الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وان خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اول بريز فور الله سبحانه وتعالى and peace and blessings be upon his prophets and messengers all the prophets and messengers of Allah from Adam alayhi salam to Nuh alayhi salam Ibrahim alayhi salam Musa alayhi salam Isa alayhi salam and the last and the final prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhi wa alayhi majma'in i bear witness that there is no god except Allah and i bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhi is the final prophet and messenger of Allah <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran يا ايها الذين امنوا اذا نودي للصلاه من يوم الجمعه فاصعوا الى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم ان كنتم تعلمون الله سبحانه وتعالى في الجمعه او يو هو بيليف وين ذا كول وين ذا اذان فور جمعه برير از جيفن ذن كم رش رننج تورد تو تو ذا ذكر اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى اند ليف اول يور بزنس اول يور ترانزاكشنز and this is good for you if you know juma is a very special day juma is uh, as hadith of the prophet said khairu yawm in talat fi shams it is the best day on which the sun rises and every day of course sun rises in the morning but this is the best day of all those days in which the sun rises why because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi hai khuliq adam on this day allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created adam alayhi salam wa fi hai udkhil al jannah On this day, he was given entry into Jannah, and this is the day on which then the resurrection is going to take place, and the gathering before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is going to take place. So it's a great day, and that's why uh, we consider that as a day of Eid as well. It's a weekly Eid. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has blessed this Ummah with this weekly Eid. It's a day of uh, celebration every every week. We thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. and how often you get up in the morning and you think is it not is it routine i we get up in the morning and the sun rises and then after that we go to work and have our uh, meals meals and come back and all of these things but imagine any day could be a day of trouble any day something can could happen uh, sometime suddenly earthquake comes sometime some problem comes some some accident take place somebody dies somebody something happen So one should be very thankful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He has given us a day, and every day when we get up, we should thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So every day is, is, is a blessing of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Every day is uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's gift, and the day has to be used in the right way. They have they have to be used to give thank to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and avoid anything that is wrong, anything that is forbidden. But then especially comes the Friday. In this Friday, there is a sa'a, as the Sulla Sam said, there is a moment that comes. on friday whatever dua you make is going to be accepted now the ulama say what is what is that moment of dua what time it is when this dua should be taken place some this is the dua <coughs> when the azan is called so between azan and the khutbah some say it is the time when the imam sits between the two khutbahs that is the time when you make dua some say it is any time it could be any time but until from the morning till the sunset time but it is a day then there is a moment when the dua is made and the dua is accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this day should be celebrated very much and we should not neglect the juma prayer of course today alhamdulillah we had two we had eid prayer and juma prayer according to hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you pray eid then the juma prayer becomes optional but it is good because the sulah said wa nahnu mujammiun but we are going to make juma So that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made the Jum'ah and the many Sahaba made the Jum'ah but he Islam is the religion of uh, yusr yuridu Allah bikum al yusra wa la yuridu bikum al usra so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained that and on the basis of that some ulama 
have taken the position that Juma is that Juma is fourth otherwise. So we have to remember that. And whatever you do, whatever business you do, whatever work you do, always remember that you must pray Juma. Don't neglect Juma. When you take a job, tell your employer that Juma is my special day. And on this day I'm going to be away from my work between these times. You can make it up later, you can make it over the weekend, you can make it in the later after the work. You make it up, of course, you have to do your job in the right way. And do not take more than what, what, what time that you, you give it, because of course this is an amana. In Allah amanati ila ahliha, Allah commands you that you fulfill your trust. So you are, if you are an employee, you have a responsibility to fulfill the time. For the time for which you are paid. And you have to be there. And if you have taken the time off, then you have to complete it. Unless the, empl the employer says, okay, I give you the time for two hours off. That should be okay. But Muslims have to abide by their... Ya uh, amanu The Quran says, oh, you who believe, fulfill your contracts. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question you about your contract. It doesn't make any difference whether the contract is made with a Muslim or with a non-Muslim. This is the beauty of Islam. In Islam, ethic is not parochial. Islam, the, the morality is not parochial morality. Some people have parochial morality. That with our, within our group, we do certain things. With outside, don't care. But that's not what Islam teaches. Islam says that whatever is right, is right wherever you are. If you speak the truth, you speak the truth to everybody. If you, are, if you have to be honest, honest with everybody. If you do not, you should not cheat, you should not cheat anybody. So this is the basic principle of Islam. That's why so if people work, if you have your own job, of course, that's your own job. But if you are working for somebody else, then you should tell them that you are going to take this time off and make this agreement, inshallah. And when you make this agreement, then try to fulfill that and try to come to Jum'ah prayer. But very often we see that people come to Jum'ah prayer late. They come thinking that khutbah is not really part of the Jum'ah. At least I should go and pray the two rak'ah. But khutbah is also. I mean, nudi al salati min yawm al Jum'ah fasa'aw. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when the call to prayer is made, then should come. So you should be here before the azan. Or at least when the azan is going on, you should be here. And if you start doing that, inshallah, because we find that half of the masjid is full when you start the prayer, and then after that, slowly, slowly, people start coming. By the time people finish the prayer, the people are there. But that's late. That's late. It should not be done that way, unless some traffic, somebody got caught up in the traffic and could not make it. Then Sharia is again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the, the, the blessing. He says, okay, if you are, even if you. Join the jama'ah at the end, you will get some reward for that, inshallah. But there is the hadith of the Prophet that says that uh, the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come, open their register, and write the names of everybody who is coming to the masjid. When the Imam comes to give the khutbah, they close the register. Oh, you are absent. The register is closed. You may get the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you got the jama'ah. But again, the blessing that comes into the register of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the register is closed. The man, angels close the book. They sit down and listen to the imam. So this is, uh, again, another important point. That's why it's important that we should uh, pay attention to the Friday. And today, alhamdulillah, we have double blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is that we have Eid and we have, alhamdulillah, this uh, Friday prayer. And uh, so inshallah the reward, the reward will be double, the reward will be great. We'll pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our Eid a blessed Eid inshallah and make our Jum'ah a Mubarak Jum'ah inshallah. Islam, my brothers and sisters, is the deen, is the deen of action. It's the deen of commitment. This religion is not simply say that you feel good, but it says that you do good. And once you do good, you should feel good. There are some people who will say, yeah, as long as you feel happy, it's okay. But feel happy, why? Feel happy by doing good things. That's why Rasulullah said, This is like a barometer. Each one of us can check our own iman. 
How can I check my iman? This is the hadith of the Prophet it really gives us a very beautiful principle of checking about ourselves, not about checking other people, checking ourselves. Because it is important to check ourselves. Very often people go and talk about others, but they don't talk about themselves. Hasibu and fuzakum qabla an tuhasabu. The hadith of the Prophet said, check yourself before you check somebody else. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will check you. Before the day of judgment take place and the hisab will take place, check yourself. Make your own hisab. Make your own hisab every day. Now one way to check ourselves, one way to check our iman, the level of our iman is this way. The hadith of the Prophet said, إِذَا أَسْرَرَتْكَ حَسَنَتُكْ وَسَاءَتْكَ سَيِّئَتُكْ فَأَنْتَ مُؤْمِنٍ If your good deed makes you happy, and your bad deed makes you unhappy, then you are a believer. Then you are a mu'min. So once when we, alhamdulillah, when we do good, do good, then we should feel good. And they should make us happy. Alhamdulillah, I prayed today five prayers. I mean, if you check it in the evening and say, did, we, did I pray for five prayers on time, not late? So I say, alhamdulillah, I prayed all my five prayers in on time. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Just feel happy with that. You fasted during the month of Ramadan? Alhamdulillah, I fasted every day. I did not miss any day. Alhamdulillah. If I miss for some reason, for some excuse, I'm going to make it up as soon as possible. If I was not well, if I was traveling, if some other thing happened, I'll make it up, inshallah. If some reason I could not do it, I'll try to pick, make the fidya for that. If any mistake happen, I have to make kafar, I make kafar. Because my, my obligations must be complete. I must be up to date on that. Similarly, and if you have done that, alhamdulillah, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the hadith of the Prophet said, لِسْصَائِمِ for hatan. For the fasting person, there are two happy moments. The first happy moment is when he breaks the fast. Alhamdulillah. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the food, now is the time to eat it. So you enjoy that. You take your water, you take your food, enjoy that. So this is a very happy moment. But then he said there is another happy moment. And that happy moment, when he's going to meet his Lord, he'll be very happy. He's going to be happy with his fasting. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us happy on that day. Because of our, because of our fasting, because of our doing the right thing. So, it is, so we feel happy when we do our obligations. Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Not bragging about it, but we're thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Similarly, if you are able to pay your zakat, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me and I was able to pay it. This is the haqq of the masakeen. This is the haqq of the poor. Sometimes people feel it, why I have to pay so much? I've been earning and all of this thing. Now I have to take out. But think about that. Any day you can be sick, you're out of job, you lose, then what happened? Or you sometimes accident had to take place, some, something happened, how much money you are going to lose? So be thankful to Allah that He has given you. And you are able to give to the poor and the needy. So give your zakat. And feel happy. And if those who give the zakat, yu'tuna, wa hum raki'oon, they humble by giving it. Thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they give that. Similarly, if you perform hajj, be thankful to Allah. You were able to do and we perform the hajj. All the other good things that you do that, be thankful to Allah. Don't feel a burden on yourself. Why I have to do that? Why I have to perform prayers? I got to get up early in the morning. Why I have to do all of this? No, don't.